Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, I spent about 35 plus hours rune crafting to get to level 95 so I would be set for wrath runes. And I spent an hour crafting wrath runes, and just with that amount alone, I'll be set for a while. You know what sucked about crafting wrath runes, though, is that I don't have a crafting cape. And not just for rune crafting, but for quite a few other skills, too. The crafting cape gives you unlimited teleports to the crafting guild, which is a very close teleport to a bank, and I would really like to get that skill cape. The whole time I've been playing this account, I just completely forgot to do giant seaweed runs, or maybe it's just the fact I didn't care up until recently. I had just now considered getting 99 crafting. So I wasn't doing giant seaweed runs up until like maybe eight or nine days ago or something. I've been farming over 1k giant seaweed per day and this is the amount I have. I was doing nearly as many seaweed runs as I possibly could, so that's how I was able to stockpile this much so quickly. If you go to the OSR's portal website, uh, I looked up the giant seaweed calculator, you enter in your crafting XP or your level, uh, the method you'll be doing for super glass make, what you'll be making, target level 99, and it gives you all this data about like the amount of giant seaweed you need, the sand you need, even the seaweed spores you need if you enter in the approximate amount of seaweed that you'd get per spore. The amount of giant seaweed I'm going to need is 10.4k and you saw that I'm like, what was it, 9800? So I'm very close. I'll just do a few more seaweed runs while I'm mining sand, but I might not even need this much because this, of course, isn't taking into account the other crafting XP I have banked. Like, I have more gems I can cut and stuff too that's just sitting in the bank. So I might even be fine with what I have, but I'll still do some more giant seaweed runs. And then I have enough astrals because I just crafted a bunch from my little RC grind I just finished. And then 62.5k bucks of sand is what I'm going to need. But before we get on with it, we have a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet, which is smaller, lighter, and thinner compared to traditional wallets. Even with how small the wallet is, it can hold up to 12 cards, it has RFID blocking technology, and you can choose between a strap or a clip for cash. Your cash is very secure on the Ridge. I've been using it since 2020 and I've had no issues and no concerns about losing cash. To get your cards out of the wallet, like the name implies, all you have to do is push your finger into the Ridge. Every Ridge wallet comes with a 45 day money back guarantee so you can try it out and see if it's for you. On top of that, the Ridge team is so confident with their product that they offer a lifetime warranty. So if you get a Ridge wallet, it is the only wallet you will ever have to buy. They have free shipping, and if you don't like it, they have free returns too. So go to ridge.com slash mudkip and check out their key cases, wallets, and other products. And you can purchase bundles too for an extra discount. And if you use my code mudkip at checkout, you'll get 10% off. Thank you so much to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Thankfully, because I have the RD Elite Diary done, I've had Bert delivering eight 84 bucks of sand to my bank every single day I've logged in, which is every single day. And this is the amount of sand I have accumulated from that. So insane, crazy amounts. <laughs> Thank you, Bert. I'm definitely going to get passive 99 crafting from you. I have to buy buckets to hold the sand, though, so I guess I'll buy like 60k-ish or something. And the only place really worth buying buckets is from the Culinary Mancer's chest, because I was looking at the wiki here for the empty bucket packs, and I sorted it by stock, and all the other places have stocks of like 15, 10 to 15, um, except the Culinary Mancer's chest has it stocked at 50, if you have all the RFD subquests done, which I do. So I'm going to start with 10 mil in my inventory, buy out probably just two inventory, yeah, full inventory, two inventories per world, and we'll see how much it costs. All done, and it costed about 500k for about 68k Kobe's, which is all I'm going to need for 99 crafting. Unfortunately, I don't have the Desert Elite Diary done, otherwise the Desert Amulet 4 would give you unlimited protection from the heat in the desert. But what I have instead is the new circlet of water, or somewhat new item. You can charge it up with water runes, and five water runes equals one charge. And one charge is just the same as using a sip from a water skin. So I'm gonna grab about 50k water runes. That's gonna give it essentially 10,000 water skin charges. So I won't have to worry about using humidify there and keeping water skins in my inventory, which is gonna use up even more inventory space, which you don't want when you're mining sand. I recently spent one mil to give the Camulet unlimited charges, so I will very easily be able to go back and forth through my birdhouse runs, a few more giant seaweed runs, and yeah, it'll be very easy to get back here. I'm gonna deposit buckets with Drew. I'm not sure if 25K is the cap or how many, can I store all of them with him? No, okay, 25k is the cap. Over the last couple weeks, I have been mining sand here and there, and the amount that I've saved up so far is about 23.7k. The cap is 25k for the amount of sand and the amount of buckets that you can store with him at once, so I'm getting very close to being full, or he's 
getting close to being full of sand, which is a perfectly normal thing to say. So I'm just going to claim the sand now. It costs 50k per bucket, which means I'm going to be spending about 1.2 mil GP to claim the 23k sand. And now I'll be starting from scratch once again to get to the next set of 25k. And before I leave to go bank real quick, I'm just going to deposit the buckets with him. So he is now at full buckets once again. Very interesting. I spend 50 GP per bucket of sand, or actually even more because I have to buy the buckets and they're worth 49 GP each. This truly is like an Iron Man thing to do. When I do my giant seaweed runs, uh, I do it like right after the birdhouse run. I do the birdhouse run first, then I come over to the boat. I think doing it this way is a bit faster than running from that last birdhouse up there. I just press option two and that takes me to the boat right up here. And then I press option three and that takes me over to the little island. The nice part about farming all that giant seaweed is that it's a one in 15 chance per patch to get a Hispori seed. And I was kind of running low before, and I still don't have a second bucket for myself because I gave my first one to Spook, and today is not the day. But yeah, I've been trying to do Hispori as often as I can, and I definitely would not have been able to do that if it wasn't for all the giant seaweed. I still have a bunch more Hispori seeds in reserve. With the Varrock Armor 2 or above, I have the Varrock Armor 3, you get a 10% chance to mine double sandstone, and if you unfilter the game chat, you can see in here, you'll get the message when you get the extra ore. And when the Varrock Plate Body procs and you get the extra ore, you do get double XP to get the little bonus for the second ore, which you'll see when I mine this rock, this sandstone right here. Yeah, that took me so many tries to get that live. I could have done the voiceover, but I feel like it's just it's cooler when you when you do it live. I mean, that was first try. No way I called it. That's crazy. We have level 86 mining. Well, you can see first day of mining sand. I averaged about 30K, just under 30K mining XP per hour. Very, very inefficient. Got a bit over 15K bucks of sand, which means I mined like 2,200 to 2,300 bucks of sand per hour, which is pretty bad and pretty inefficient, but that's just how I roll. If you're actually like paying attention the whole time, you could probably get like 40K XP per hour and probably get like 3.5k buckets of sand maybe but hey at least it's better than filling up buckets of sand in yanel i remember back in the day in like 2018 on my hardcore i would like move my poh to yanel teleport to the poh and then i would fill up buckets of sand and then bank them at like the ge teleport or something and uh i forgot how many i feel like that was 1k buckets of sand per hour maybe it was 2k but Either way, I'm definitely getting a lot more by doing this method, plus the mining XP. That was probably the worst part about having to manually fill up the bucks of sand is that you just didn't get any XP from doing it. And the sandstorm grinder is once again filled all the, almost all the way up to 25K. Let's uh, claim all the sand, spend a little bit of GP. There's about 25K more. And I thought it might be interesting to take a look at the mining XP per bucket of sand. I gained 321K mining XP for about 25K sand. Uh, which comes out to about 12.86 mining XP per sand. This is going to conclude all the sand mining. I'm Did I just walk through the pole? Bruh. Well, this concludes all the sand mining I'm going to have to do. So that is 11k more buckets of sand from Drew. And that looks like today I spent 8 hours mining sand. So uh, I guess it was like 15 hours over the last couple days to get all the sand I'm going to need. Although I did have the bit of sand from before, but... 15 hours of mining is done. I gained 464k mining XP. Let's check the charges on the circlet of water. I started with 10k and now I'm at uh, 9439. So that's like 37, probably just round that to 40 charges per hour is what you're going to use up on the circlet of water with the gear that I had at least. Here is all the sand and giant seaweed that will be enough to get me to 99 crafting and kind of curious about the price check of it. Yeah, although it's gonna cost me astral runes too. It is now time to cast a whole bunch of super glass make because while I do technically have 99 crafting banked, uh, it's not actually banked necessarily until I have this all made into molten glass. In the menu entry swapper plugin, go to item swaps and then bank withdraw shift click and you could shift click items in your bank and make that be whatever you want it to be. So I have it set to withdraw X because what I'm gonna be doing is left click to withdraw one for the three giant seaweed and then shift click the buckets of sand. I have the spellbook filter set up, so this is the only spell that's gonna show there. And now we have a whole inventory of molten glass. And a lot of the time, it is gonna to drop to the ground. I have the bank floor set up, by the way, so these don't go into the bank. So you'll see the glass will sometimes appear on the ground like that. And what you could do, I'm just showing this as an example. I'm not gonna be doing it in Ferox. 
Um, but what you can do is if you have the looting bag in your inventory and you have it open, you could pick up the molten glass and it'll go into the looting bag. So that way you'll be able to have like two inventories in a way. You can only do this in Ferox though, because Ferox is the only place outside the wildy where you can put items into a looting bag. I don't think it's worth the extra effort of using the looting bag, especially if you're playing in resizable. Like I don't need the looting bag. I can just click it right from the bank interface. So it seems like it's kind of uh, creating an extra step there. Um, but maybe you can figure out a way to optimize this method to work for you. But for me, I'm going to go to a more secluded place because I'm just going to end up letting a bunch of the molten glass stay on the ground for a bit. And then other people could pick it up if they see it because I'm going to leave it there for a long time or for like more than a minute. So I'm going to go to a more secluded thing for this. Did you know inside of the woodcutting guild there is a cave and inside of this cave there are ants. But not only are there ants in the back corner section over here, there's a bank chest. When you cast super glass make, you get bonus molten glass per bucket of sand. So it's not actually a one-to-one -one ratio. If you use regular seaweed with buckets of sand, it's a 1.3x multiplier. With two giant seaweed and 12 sand, it's 1.45x. And with three giant seaweed and 18 sand, it's a 1.6x multiplier, which is why that's what I'm doing. You could do three and 18 and not pick up the leftovers on the ground, and you'd still average 1.488x, which is still more than doing two to 12 where you get 1.45x. So really, you should always be doing three to 18, and then it's up to you if you wanna spend more time picking up molten glass or spend more time collecting the resources. You might also consider using the inventory viewer plugin. Um, doesn't really matter, but uh, it could be helpful for some people. Well, hatch peppers are finally in season once again. They're probably one of my favorite peppers. Um, you can only get them like two months out of the year in August and September, because that's like the only growing season. Maybe they're my favorite because of the scarcityness of them. I don't know if it's kind of like placebo effect because of that, but yeah, I'm making a little dinner today with the hatch peppers. When we were at the store today, uh, we went to Albertsons. It's, uh, it's a grocery store. Some of you may know it as Jewel. Uh, we got an amazing deal on these potatoes. Car was just like picking out toothpaste or something, and I was looking at the Albertsons app on my phone, and I saw a coupon that seemed too good to be true, but it said free 10 pound bag of potatoes. And it, it truly was. We went to the checkout and it was free, so we got 10 pounds of potatoes. It was actually the last bag they had in stock, so I got very, very lucky with that, I guess. Oh my God. I just saw the little group thing had the blue thing on it because I have the chat hidden. I don't know how long ago she got this. <laughs> yes, thank you. I just messaged, I messaged her like an hour ago or something. I was like, have you killed a sport today? And there it is in the group storage, the bottomless bucket. Isn't that so cute? Like I got a bucket for her a while ago and now she ended up getting a bucket for me. And I am getting a uh, crafting level just from doing the super glass make. That is level 91. I was looking at the amounts of supplies I have and this is actually enough to get me over 100K, but after doing the math, I think I won't even need 100, like it should be under 100K to get me to 99, but I'm just gonna go to 100K cause it's gonna look very clean. Ah, uh, there's the six hour log. I was kind of hoping I could get this all done before six hours, but I still have about 5K more to make. It doesn't matter. Oh, this is it, the last inventory. This is gonna be 100,000 molten glass, which looks very nice next to the bowstrings also being 100K, except I'm actually gonna be using the molten glass. So between last night and today, I gained 624K crafting XP at 80K crafting XP per hour, which means it was about eight hours. And of course, I have to show the price check. 100,000 molten glass is worth 11.2 mil. I'm curious if doing this is profitable for magic slash crafting training on a main. So if you put the inputs in, three seaweed, 18 sand, two astral runes, that is 1907. And then the output on average is about 29 molten glass. Oh wow, you do profit doing that. This is, pr I f okay, I guess for me, I was gonna say it's really good, but when like battle staves and uh, black dehyde bodies exist, I guess it's not good crafting XP but it is profitable, so there's an option for you. Or actually, even if you don't pick up the excess off the ground, you get much better XP rates, or decently amount better. I ended up using almost exactly 7,000 astrals to blow this molten glass. I get 70 XP per molten glass, which means this is seven mil XP, and I'm currently at 6,035,000, so that is like the exact amount to get me to 99. Um, but I will have leftover at the end because I do have a bunch of uncut gems that I still gotta cut at some point. I'll probably still keep on getting more from, I don't know, maybe raids or 
Slayer or something before I actually get 99, which by the way, I'm not gonna be grinding 99 crafting straight out because I'm always gonna need AFK activities to do and I will eventually run out of AFK things before I max, I think, because right now my AFK things are just woodcutting, fishing, and maybe mining if you count motherboard, but I still have a bunch of other skills I have to get up. So I'm gonna save this molten glass for when I need to AFK, so probably a couple hours every night or maybe a bit more when I'm editing videos. Let's talk about the real highlight of this video though, the bottomless bucket which Spook just got for me. What was her case? Let me check her KC. It's 1 in 35 and she got it at 39. I've pretty much been doing my Hispori like every day as soon as I possibly Possibly can and I'm glad I've been doing the giant seaweed because that's how I've been getting all the Hispori seeds. Otherwise I would have run out a long time beforehand. It is kind of ironic though that I don't end up getting this bottomless bucket until after I farmed all that giant seaweed which I probably end up using maybe like 300 ultra compost for. And if you don't know what this does, it doubles the compost that you put in. So I would have saved probably like 150, maybe even more than that. Um, but I'm going to take all the ultra compost I have from the tool leprechaun use it on the bucket. You can only have one kind of compost in the bucket at a time. So if I put in this ultra compost, then I won't be able to use super compost on the bucket, which I mean, there's really no reason to do that anyway. So I'm gonna put all the ultra compost in there and I now have, oh yes. And I now have 592 charges. And very conveniently, I can store this bucket with the Tool Leprechaun. I probably won't even ever have to grab empty buckets out of the Tool Leprechaun ever again, so I guess uh, that, that's capped out at 1k and that's a completionist thing or something. But the really nice thing about this though is that I could just take out the Ultra Compost right from the bin straight into the bottomless bucket. And wait, let me just double check. It should be two charges. I mean, obviously it's gonna be two charges, but just to show you, uh, currently at 598, I'm gonna take out a thing from here, check again, and it is at 600. I have basically never done herb runs on this account. Uh, very recently, because we were kind of getting further into the accounts and I felt like herb was gonna be a bottleneck, I did somewhat recently start using the three patches that never die no matter what. I've been planting snapdragons there. But besides for the snapdragons, I think all this stuff is just from doing PVM stuff over the last few months. Look at all these anima seeds I've accumulated from his spore because I just haven't been using them on the account because I haven't been doing herb runs, but now it is time to begin. Each of these seeds lasts for three and a half days and like the Atta seeds gives you more yield, the Chrono seeds make stuff grow faster, or I guess like skip cycles. The Eyesore seeds decrease the chance of crops dying. So uh, it's the Atta seeds and the Eyesore seeds that I would think are most useful for herbs. The Chrono seeds to speed stuff up doesn't really seem like it'd be useful for doing herb runs because it doesn't speed everything up, there's just a chance. So some herbs get done faster, some don't. This seems like it's more for trees. Yeah, if they each last three and a half days and I have over 40 of them, even if I'm constantly planting these, they're gonna last a long time. Now, what I lack in herbs, I make up for in si uh, seeds, seeds, seeds. Because I built the Nexus pretty recently in my POH, really all I need to get around to all the patches is just my con cape, uh, and then the Arty Cloak, Explorer's Ring, both of which have unlimited teleports, and in the Nexus, I have these three teleports right here. Have the Oh, I recently got the Mauritania Elite Diary done as well, so I can use the Harmony Island patch. Access to all nine of the herb patches. I am gonna be zooming through these herb runs. What I do with these undiseasable patches is I use the higher tier herbs, so like the Ranar, Snapdragon, and Torstal. And then with all the other patches, I use the lower tier seeds. Another unspoken perk of having the bottomless bucket is you don't have to like have a bunch of compost buckets in your inventory and drop them as you go or even just grab one at a time and just have the one spot taken up and that's it. As of right now, I have apparently 83 Herbler banked, about 770k XP. So uh, maybe in a few weeks or months or something, uh, we'll check back in after I've done a bunch of herb runs and we'll see uh, how much more banked XP I have. I'll try to keep up with these. It's kind of gonna depend on what I'm doing. Like there might be days where I just am on top of it all day long. Other times I might not even do herb runs for a day or a couple days. Just depends on what my main activity I'm working on is. I probably will be taking a break from the seaweed runs at the very least because, I mean, they are good for the Hispori seeds and they are a good chance for the pet, but I think I'm a bit burnt on the seaweed runs for now. Anyways, I have something very fun planned for the next video, something that we haven't done yet on the account, and I'm very much looking forward to it. And uh, make sure you stay tuned and you can see what we get up to in the next video. With that said, you can check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs channel linked below in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.